I'm always surprised. I picked up somebody hitchhiking the other day. <gasps> and she said, oh, it's my birthday. And I think she was like 25 or something. Or, and I said, well, how old do you think I am? Because I think I'm, I'm, I think I'm very young. I think I look young. I think I feel young. I think I act young. I think I am young. She's 75. I could have thrown her out of the car. And the other thing is, you know, I was in San Francisco like five years ago, and a woman got up from her seat in the bus to offer it to me. I mean, San Francisco was a much nicer place when I was younger. <laughs> How do I feel about age? I don't know. It has its, it's, it, it has its downs, man. But I believe it was David Bowie who said, when you're older, you become the person you were supposed to be. I guess the ultimate question is, would I exchange my knowledge for my body? No. No, no, no. I... No. I... I'm happy. I'm getting there. I used to say that there are only two things that existed in life, and that was love and fear. But very recently, I've come to acknowledge that pain is also there. I felt pain all my life. I have been motivated it's been the driving force in my life has been pain. You feel enough pain, you're going to want to change. I didn't realize anything was wrong. Though. I mean, I was sticking needles in my arm. And I didn't realize anything was wrong. <laughs> there was something wrong. I have been running all my life. One of the reasons I think I was running so much is because I didn't learn love and I didn't learn trust because that wasn't to be seen. And if you don't have that, you're constantly looking for something. And if you add a good healthy dose of drugs in there as well, then you have a prime breeding gown for distraction. And distraction keeps your mind off what hurts. So you just keep on going. And then it doesn't help at all when your caregiver tells you you're defective and tells everyone else you're defective as well. When in reality, we're all born good people, you know? We're all, it's, we haven't done anything wrong. And unfortunately, I think that self-doubt and accusing yourself is very common because you think, what's wrong with me? Why, why couldn't that person love me?
and guilt is terrible. And it's even worse when you feel guilty about something that you didn't know that you were doing something wrong. Your mind goes through incredible gymnastics to be able to justify your own lack of self-worth. And going through life like that is very painful. I went through life choosing the hardest route because in my mind it was preparing myself for the road ahead, which is difficult because for me life is difficult. I went down this highway of speed bumps going as fast as I could so I could learn how to land and survive the landing instead of realizing that those speed bumps are there to slow you down. That's the biggest lesson that I am learning and that I'm exercising is that when my mind is racing and when my heart is racing and when my head is not in a good space and when I have problems and, and just stop. I stop and I say, is it relevant? Relevant to my happiness, relevant to my well-being, relevant to my peace, is it relevant to what I'm doing? And often it's not. So just stop, be mindful, and peace will come. And, and that's something which, I'm, which I've never known. A nice nin said that New Year's resolutions don't mean anything to me because self-scrutiny and, and, and self-development is such a daily occurrence that it would be redundant to do on a New Year's Eve. And that's the way I feel. And every day is an opportunity to look at yourself and to notice things. The biggest thing that I'm working on right now is something that until six months ago wasn't even my vocabulary. I didn't know how to spell it and that was humility. And I sorely need it. Because I've been living a lie. Because I've been pretentious. Because I've been putting ribbons on my hat that sometimes I didn't deserve. Sometimes I probably shouldn't have been wearing the hat at all because I've been hiding behind it. Probably more than most people because my core was missing and my core was missing because I, because my foundation was missing. So it's very important for me to get my core, be it ever so humble. People who know my life could see it as being 
very difficult. I think it's wonderful. I think it's so beautiful to be free. At the top of the copies, I say three times, Asante Asana Wakandanka. Asante Asana is thank you. Uh, and Wakantanka is the Great Spirit. The Great Spirit, which is um, the Great Spirit, everything. Everything, the natural world. And why do you say thank you to the Great Spirit? Because there's so much to be, to be thankful for. Excuse me. It's just so perfect, you know. It's, um... My question is, how could it not be beautiful? I mean... You know, you ask me, how, how, can, how can it be beautiful with so much pain? How can it not be beautiful with so much beauty? That's why I give thanks. Thanks to all of you who helped make this film possible. All of our films are totally crowdfunded. So if you'd like to continue to support us on our journey, check out our Green Renaissance page on Patreon.